is up fam, welcome back to All Things Dope. Finally, finally we are now officially in season three of The Flash and I gotta say, I am crazy excited. There's gonna be a lot of spoilers in it, so if you have not seen Flash season three episode one, please pause this video, watch the episode, come back to it, because I'm gonna get spoiler heavy in this mug, so if you have not seen that episode yet, don't watch this, watch The Flash, new Flash, We'll pick up, all right? All right, guys, so getting into it right now. Oh, my God. After watching the episode, I really had to just, like, pause, sit back, and just, whoa. Like, I was I was totally blown away because they definitely did a lot of the Flashpoint storyline as far as hitting the, you know, a, a lot of the major points, right, that basically he goes back in time, he saves his mom, and the world that he goes back to is totally different. Of course, in that storyline, there is no Kid Flash. So, to be able to see Wally do his thing, man, that was, that was actually pretty cool. I was excited about that uh, because I, I've been wanting to see his version of the Flash. I At first, when Wally first showed up in Season 2, I wasn't a big fan of his just because he seemed real cocky. But over time, he's grown to be actually kind of cool. He's kind of like that dude that you see from across the way. Like, you, you know, he shows up to work with you or whatever, and he seems like a jerk, but then you get to know him. It's actually okay. Uh, I actually probably fit in that category. <laughs> but, yeah. But anyways, uh, get back to it, man. It was awesome to be able to see him do his thing as the Flash, or as Kid Flash, as they call him. To be able to see him go against his enemy, a.k.a. the rival, Edward Claris. And I liked that they automatically, instantly, just went ahead and said, boom, the rival, Edward Clares. And that's actually who he is from the Golden Age comic books back in like 1949. So that was actually interesting to see because he's actually Jay Garrick's reverse Flash as opposed to the Flash's reverse Flash. So that was an interesting dynamic that they went ahead and decided to go with Edward Claris as the rival going against Kid Flash, uh, which is a very nice change up for me. Uh, I did like that. He was... The rival was pretty cocky. Like, we, we haven't really seen a cocky speedster. Granted, the reverse Flash, he's more sarcastic than he is cocky. Uh, but um, to be cocky enough to just go ahead and throw off the cow right there, day one, boom. My name is Edward Claris, and I'm here to mess stuff up. I was not expecting uh, Kid Flash to get stabbed like that. Oh, my God. Whoa. I was like, oh, snap, they just got this boy. Like, he's not even been in that whole episode. Like... It was totally unexpected, so that kind of helped push the Flash to be like, okay, I need to step this up a little bit more. This version of Iris was actually probably the best version of Iris that we've seen. Beyond Earth 3 Iris, I did like the little bit of <laughs> sassy Earth 3 Iris, but this timeline, Iris, man, she was super chill, super cool. This is the first time that we've seen her be head over heels for Barry, but also smart and strong and independent. So, like, I, I really loved this version of Iris, and I hate that, you know, she's obviously gone. They're not going back to this timeline. But it was a really good addition to this timeline, man. Because that, that's not really something that happened in the original Flashpoint Paradox. She's not really in the original Flashpoint storyline at all, the Flashpoint Paradox story. In fact, uh, in that world, Barry Allen is actually gay. So he, you know, Iris is married to somebody totally, completely different, has kids with him. So that is like a whole different dynamic. But I was glad that we could see them actually hit it off right off the bat, her and Barry, and just be crazy in love with each other and just crazy there for each other. She was super supportive, you know, and he had been living there for a few months. They say that he had been living there for three months and he finally got the, you know, courage to talk to her and it probably been like a week, maybe two weeks in between from the start of the episode to the end of the episode in this timeline. So to be able to see them connect like that just right off the bat, my gosh, like it was... It was pretty dope. I was I was super excited for that. I know that's like the love side of this whole show, but it actually plays out very well. But the best part of the show, and a bar none best part of the show, was to be able to see the Flash and the Reverse Flash. To be able to see that conversation happen. Because most of the time when you see them in the comics or you see them in these animated movies and stuff like that, because we have yet to see Flash on the big screen, but in all of these different versions, they just fight. Like, they, there's not a lot of back and forths, but to be able to see them dialogue with no sort of fighting whatsoever, it, it was crazy dope to me, just because the actor, Matt Lesher, who plays the Reverse Flash, he does an amazing job. As well as Tom Cavanaugh. Tom Cavanaugh played the Reverse Flash in 
uh, season one. So they both, the, the thing is, the crazy thing is behind the scenes, they both got together and was like, this is how we want to play this guy. And so they developed the similar mannerism so that they could mimic each other. So when it came to be on the screen that Tom Cavanaugh was the reverse flash and Matt Lesher was the reverse flash, they were the same dude. And that to me is like crazy dope that they would even put the time, put the effort to really make that feel very genuine, make that feel real that this one singular person is the reverse flash. So even though he's in Tom Cavanaugh's skin, he's the reverse flash. And as Matt Letcher's skin, he is the reverse flash. So to be able to see that back and forth, man, God, he was awesome. Uh, especially because there's a point in the episode where he says, you will be begging me to kill her soon enough. And like, you know, the, the story goes along a little bit more and you're thinking like, okay, maybe he can do something, the Flash can do something to kind of fix this without having to get his help. But ultimately at the end, it was inevitable. The thing that Barry hates the most and fears the most and is afraid of the most has to be done, which is the reverse Flash has to kill his mom in order to correct the timeline. And so, Ultimately, he has to ask for that. And what's crazy is the reverse flash knows that he's going to have to ask for it. So finally, to be able to see the reverse flash with the smirk on his face, say, I knew you were going to come back. Oh, my gosh. Like, they, the, the fact that they have that such this hate-hate relationship, because it's not a love-hate relationship. It is a hate-hate relationship. And, and they address that on the show, right? They're like, I hate you. No, I hate you. What's crazy is which one of us is right. And it's a trip, man. It really is a mind, just a, just a journey. Because if you really sit back and you look at it, if, if in your real life you had a person from the future just constantly trying to destroy your life any which way that they could, and for reasons you don't even know, total mind blown. <laughs> I, I really, oh my gosh, it is totally crazy. And um, and so <laughs> getting back into the episode, we see the reverse flash and he says, this time I get to be the hero. And he grabs Barry and he drags him back to the past. And he says, you know what? I'll do it. And so he goes and he kills his mom. And it's just a crazy, crazy scene, man. Like to be able to see, he say, finally Barry saves his mom and two seconds later, the old reverse flash disappears, the flash disappears, reverse flash shows up and kills her. And it is just this golly. If I was Barry's mom, oh my God, I'd be scared to death and then finally just get killed, man. That's that's freaking tough. And then to be able to, to see the reverse flash go back and steal with another smirk on his face. So yeah, everything's fixed. And then pieces out just like that. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Oh man, it was definitely a great, great episode. I am super pumped for this season, man. I feel like they keep taking it just higher and higher and higher. And so I really want to see how this new dynamic plays out because they went back to Edward Claris right at the end of their episode and they show Alchemy, Dr. Alchemy. Uh, and uh, so I'm thinking that they will still make him the rival eventually right i mean that that's the only reason he's still in the episode right he has to actually turn into the rival and i think dr alchemy he will have something to do with that the other big bad of this season is going to be the you know mirror master and savitar uh savitar i i thought he was going to be in the episode he hasn't made his reveal yet but he will savitar will definitely be in there but i'm excited to see what flashpoint changes and what it fixes because obviously iris and joe aren't talking right now which is definitely not from the original timeline. Uh, it does look like Cisco is definitely not on the same path as well as Caitlyn Snow is not on the same path as what they were previously. So I'm definitely loving what they're doing with this new season because it puts all of these characters, all the same characters that we loved in these different roles. Even Cisco in, in this new timeline of the Flashpoint, man. Now, it was awesome to see him play that, man, because he is a genius and he could definitely use that genius to make millions and billions of dollars. And and so to see him in such a different element, man, it was it was really incredible. I really loved Flash Season 3, what you guys are doing so far. Continue to do an amazing job. I will be tuning in week in and week out, no doubt about it. Now, as far as implications for what Flashpoint is going to do with Arrow, obviously, hands down, 
I want to see Laurel back on the show. I really think that she could come back on the show. I think with the reverse flash going back in time, uh, you know, possibly forming the Legion of Doom, I think that will change some things because Damian Dark now will be on that show, Legends of Tomorrow, even more. And I think that will create a paradox, if you will, that will allow for Laurel Lance to still be alive. How, I don't know, because it does look like at some point there is a Black Canary memorial, right? So she gets a, a statue of herself. So I think that's all going to go away. I think all of that is going to change. I think Black Canary will absolutely be back. And they will lead into some of the greatest, dopest things that should have happened from the beginning. Please, somebody, destroy Felicity. I don't care who it is. Don't get me wrong. Emily, beautiful, gorgeous girl. I don't want to see anybody get fired or lose their job, but I think that's really the only way that you can kind of course correct. Now that we've put Flashpoint on there, man, that's absolutely a reason to go ahead and allow for Felicity to get killed off. And then Dina Laurel Lance, aka just Black Canary, one Black Canary, solo, solo Black Canary, go ahead and steal Oliver's heart. And go, go that route with him, man, please, because I really want to see that dynamic. Uh, season 5 premieres tonight, so definitely be looking out for the new Arrow. And before I lead off, I do want to say congratulations, Justin. You have officially won yourself Flash Rebirth number 1, as well as a Flash Funko Pop. I will be continuing to do more giveaways as the season goes along, so definitely be tuning in, guys. All you got to do to win, of course, is be a subscriber and hit that like button. Definitely appreciate it. If you guys are feeling it, drop me some comments, man. I really want to hear what you guys thought about Season 3, Episode 1 so far. I kind of want to get where you guys are feeling.